Atlassian is a software as a service company that makes tools that make it easier for primarily tech workers to collaborate. The company reported earnings yesterday and shares were down as much as 13% in pre-market trading. So what happened during the quarter? Well, let's spend the next 10 minutes trying to figure that out. It's something I'm interested in because as of the time of this recording, I do own shares of Atlassian. I want to thank YCharts for sponsoring today's video. More from them in just a minute. So this was actually the company's fiscal third quarter of 2023 after the stock fell, it's about $23 billion. Now, if we look at the headline numbers, you might be a little bit surprised that it's down because revenue was up 24%. That was ahead of Wall Street's estimates, ahead of management's guidance. And on the bottom line, it was pretty good too. Earnings per share on a non-GAAP basis of 54 cents um, was ahead of last year and ahead of Wall Street's estimates. So far, so good. When we look at margins, there was a little bit to be worried about. We'll get to it in a minute. Gross margins ticked down meaningfully, uh, as did operating margins. However, net margins on a non-GAAP basis were up slightly. Now, if we look at free cash flow, that actually grew to $350 million, while net income on a non-GAAP basis was also up. And Atlassian has a great balance sheet with about a billion dollars in net cash. Atlassian uh, added about a, a couple, 10, about 15,000 new customers over the prior year. It was up 11% year over year. Um, the growth really came from customers who are using the cloud solution. That's no surprise. They are kind of forcing people to choose either the cloud or data center. Cloud was up 34% year over year. The data center was up 47% year over year. Marketplace and services, which are important because they add a network effect that was up 12% and as expected, the server market um, was down 29%. Again, they are sunsetting those customers. They need them to move on to the cloud or the data center. So that is to be expected. Now let's just go down the income statement. Now this is on a gap basis. It does include stock-based compensation. You'll see why that's important in just a minute. Overall revenues up 24%, okay. Gross profit, however, was only up 20% because the cost of revenues grew faster than total revenues. That is to be expected as this migration is taking place from licenses and servers to the cloud. So that's not a huge surprise. It's a good long-term move, but this is the pain in the short term that comes with it. The big black eye comes here. 53% increase in operating expenses, as you can see, R&D was a huge part of that, and stock-based compensation was a huge part of that. Um, so overall, there's a big swing from operating income of about $33 million last year to a loss of $161 million, 162 this year. Now, there is a whole lot of other stuff happening here that makes the rest of this statement not as meaningful, including interest income, um, some interest expenses, and that kind of makes this net income less meaningful as well. Again, the operating income is really more meaningful for the purposes of this than the net income. It is worth noting that despite stock-based compensation, dilution was only 1.2% from the same period last quarter. Now that's actually a pretty low number when you consider that the company spent equivalent to 28% of their revenue, $263 million on stock-based compensation. Look, I'm going to just pause for a second to say this is a little bit alarming to me. Atlassian is a company that has been around for a really long time. It's over two decades old. And to have this level of stock-based compensation at this point, I'm usually pretty, pretty willing to turn a blind eye to it. But this seems to be egregious. Well, at the same time, it's not diluting shareholders as much. So there's a lot going on here. Um, the company did repurchase about $32 million worth of shares, but that does not offset all of that stock-based compensation. Now, if reading financial statements like this is new to you or a little bit troubling, uh, Brian Proldy and I are actually having a absolutely free webinar today, May 5th at noon Eastern time. You can register for Financial Statements Explained simply an introduction to accounting by clicking on the show notes below. That's absolutely free and there will be time for live Q&A after. Now, turning to guidance, management said that they expect cloud revenue to grow about 27% in the current quarter. They said that the macroeconomic uh, situation means that there has been fewer seat expansion, which means existing customers are adding fewer new employees to uh, Atlassian's roles. Um, the newer customers are not converting to paid customers as quickly, and they have yet, but, but, 
They have yet to see an impact such as churn or upsell to premium and enterprise edition of the product. So um, it's still a tough economic situation for them. Look, that is not surprising given that this company focuses on tech companies and tech companies are who is laying off lots of employees right now. So there's less users for Atlassian's products. Um, if we turn to guidance management, um, guided for about 20% year-over-year growth at the midpoint, that's lower than Wall Street's estimates. That is likely a large part of the fact that the stock is down today. They did not give uh, bottom line estimates, although Wall Street's expecting 36 cents per share for the full year, which ends during this uh, current quarter. Uh, Wall Street's expecting 25% top line growth and a little bit of a shrinking of um, bottom line earnings per share on a non-GAAP basis, that will probably be revised upwards. So what should we look for moving forward? Well, number one, keep an eye on revenue. Um, but number two, keep an eye on those operating margins. Because look, they are spending like crazy, especially on R&D. A lot of that is stock-based compensation, but they also had a round of layoffs. And so you should look to see if their operating margin improves. Keep an eye on free cash flow, especially that stock-based compensation. And then finally, just new product uptake. Overall, even though the stock is down, it's hard to say that the moat is is shrinking. It's definitely stable. It might even be widening. And despite this, um, I, I think that the thesis is still on track. If there are signs of chinks in the armor, I have yet to see them, although those with more experience in the industry might. It still gets a 12 and a half on my checklist. It got an 82 the last time Brian Feroldi ran it through. But now let's turn to valuation. Um, we've got to figure out what stage of growth is Atlassian in. Well, on a gap profits, they're actually still back here, but really in terms of free cash flow, they're more here, which means that we'll look at things like price to forward earnings, price to free cash flow, and reverse discounted cash flow. And for that, we're going to turn to Y Charts. Uh, thanks, Y Charts, again for sponsoring today's video. Mention Brian Froley's name and you'll get 20% off your subscription. And you can start a free trial by clicking the very top of the show notes below. So if we use Y Charts, we see that the company's forward PE ratio right now is 90. That is extremely expensive. And even the price to free cash flow of 44, now that will drop a little bit because the additional free cash flow that just came in has yet to make it through the systems. Um, so I'd say it's probably in the ballpark of 40 times free cash flow. That's not outrageously expensive, but it's definitely not cheap either. Um, again, and so what we want to look at next is we want to look at a reverse discounted cash flow model. So we have this uh, tool that Brian Feroldi, Brian Withers and I built. If you click on this tab down here and you type in the company's ticker, which is team, that's Atlassian. And then you have to type in its free cash flow over the trailing 12 months. I've done the math and that is $820 million. And then we've got to put in, well, what is the terminal growth rate? We'll say two, that's about GDP. And what's the discount rate? I'd say this is about medium level of risk, so I'll say 10%. And then what we have to do is make these two numbers match. So we see if we're if we're saying that Atlassian's gonna grow free cash flow by 25% per year for the next 10 years, it should be trading at about $208 per share with this discount rate and growth rate, but we want them to match. So we lower it to say 20. And if we do that, oops, I've gotta do it over here. We lower it to 20. And if we do that, we see it bumps down, but still not totally dumped down to 19. So maybe like 18 and a half percent. We see those two numbers matching. So what this means is, is that if you are investing in Atlassian now and you want about a 10% return per year, then you, you are assuming that the company will be able to grow free cash flow by about 18 and a half percent per year. Can they do that? That's a tall order. It's not impossible, but that's where the company is right now. Again, if you want to register for our all free webinar, that's at noon today. See the link in the show notes below. Overall, a relatively solid quarter for Atlassian. This is really just evaluation, um, refiguring, and a little bit of a disappointment in terms of the forecast moving forward. We'll check back in on this one in 90 days. Until then, Brian out.